One of the objections to the COVID-19 vaccines that you sometimes hear floating around is that the vaccines contain material from aborted fetuses, or more specifically fetal cells. This then forms part of a belief that they must necessarily reject the vaccine despite any outside information. So to answer this question extremely quickly, no, none of the available vaccines, those from Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, contain any fetal material whatsoever. However, from an ethical standpoint, which is maybe what's more important in all of this, material from aborted fetuses is sometimes used in development of the vaccines, specifically something called a fetal cell line. So to be clear and just frame the rest of what I'm about to say, the vaccines themselves contain no fetal material, but were perhaps researched, developed and tested on fetal material, or at least the descendants of fetal material, and this is what we'll talk about now. So what is a fetal cell line, that thing I mentioned just now? These are bundles of cells that are grown in a specialised laboratory, most commonly from fetuses that were aborted, that is, underwent termination in the 1970s and 80s. Because we can continue to grow, culture and replicate these cells simply by bathing them in the right concentration of chemicals, this gives us access to a never-ending source of human cells that we can use for testing and research, crucially without having to harvest any more material. Obviously by now, in the 2020s, we are many, many, many thousands of replication cycles removed from the original material, but that is where the information ultimately came from. The Moderna and Pfizer mRNA COVID vaccines, for example, were developed and tested on the HEK293 cell test line. HEK stands for Human Embryonic Kidney, and there are many skews of this cell line that exist, but for the purposes of this video, what we need to understand is that the HEK cell line was originally isolated from an aborted human female, that is an aborted female fetus, in 1973 in the Netherlands. Just to be specific, this material might be from a medically terminated fetus, or a fetus that was spontaneously aborted, which we call a miscarriage. It's not 100% clear in this case which. These cells to this day are known for being very easy to grow, to culture, and then crucially to transfect, that is to take genetic material from the outside and put into the inside of these cells. And as I say, this makes them useful for testing new drugs and new medicines without having to cause any more harm to a living subject. The slightly newer Johnson & Johnson vaccine, just for purposes of reference, was tested in a similar cell line called PER-C6. And all of the same principles apply, but these cells, instead of coming from the embryonic kidney, are from the retina, one of the cell layers that exists at the back of the eye. So ethically, where does this leave us? Well, obviously some people have quite mixed feelings about this, because it's not ultimately known whether the original cells for lines like HEK293 came from a miscarried fetus or a medically terminated fetus, and that leaves the possibility that some of those cells came from a voluntarily terminated fetus, then some Catholics, for example, have spoken out against the use of the vaccine. Practically speaking, certainly as of 2022, leaders of virtually all the world's largest religions have spoken out and said that it is acceptable to use the vaccine to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. These include, for example, the Catholic Pope, the Dalai Lama. The majority of Islamic scholars believe that the vaccine is halal and can be taken on top of that during Ramadan. The vaccines are considered kosher for Jews, and I obviously can't make sweeping statements about everybody's personal takes on their own religions, but it seems to be the case, at least from an outsider, I'm a non-religious person, there seem to be relatively few religious leaders, if any, that object to their constituents and the adherence to their faith taking the vaccine. And of course, I'm not going to suggest that only religious people may object to the vaccines being developed and tested on fetal material either. It's an extremely common complex ethical topic which many, many people have their own personal feelings on, and I am wary of being reductive. I thought it would just be helpful to explore the issue and illustrate the fact that sometimes fetal material, or that is cells that were harvested a very long time ago from fetal material, are still used in today's drug and medicine development cycles. Thank you very much for watching, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you next time.